Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to be looking at each biome and the pros and cons of building there. Let's get to it. Here we have the meadows. The meadows is the best beginning biome to build in. There's lots of wood available, it's from fine wood. You'll also find some stone in the meadows, but you won't really be able to make much use of it until you get the pick from Ether. The meadows is the most peaceful biome to build in, so it's usually people's preference. Try and build near the ocean. The closer you are to the ocean, the more convenient it is to explore, and then you're going to have more fun. Next we have the Black Forest. The Black Forest has lots more resources than the meadows does, because there's also core wood, lots more wood because trees are everywhere in the Black Forest, and an abundance of stone. You'll also find copper and tin in the Black Forest, which enables you to enter the Bronze Age. Another great perk of working in the Black Forest is that if these, if you build your base near one of these Grey Dwarf spawners, you can turn it into a passive stone, wood, and resin farm. These passive farms only work properly if your base is close by to them, because that keeps them running. If your character is not nearby, then the farm will only run if you go into a portal and it gets really boring and immersion breaking. So if you want to use one of these, I encourage you to make a base near it. That's going to make it work properly. A downside of the Black Forest is that it's home to the troll. Uh, trolls make walls look like butter, so you need to be very careful to avoid them. Whereas the Grey Dwarves don't pose that much of a threat to your buildings and structures. The trolls absolutely do. Ah, the swamp. Unfortunately, it's normally a lot darker. I got rid of the darkness just because this is a video and I want it to look bright and visible. The swamp is a great place to get certain resources, such as ancient wood, and the material you need to make sausages out of the droger, which are a really good food available early on because you get four of them each time you craft. You'll also find iron in the swamp, which is critical for your progression. And if you build your base near one of these flame spouts that spawns sirtling, you'll get a steady supply of sirtling cores and coal, which helps save you time because later on it can get pretty tedious converting all of the wood you need to coal to smell all of the black metal and iron and other stuff that you're going to get in Valheim. So this is a great way to maximize your time in the swamp so that while you're doing your iron stuff, you're also accumulating sirtling cores and coal. The threat of the swamp comes twofold. There's these abominations here, which are going to make your wolves like butter. And there's also wraiths, which fly high up in the trees, and they can come over your walls and come directly into your base. So wraiths mean that your base needs a roof to be safe. Another caveat of building in the swamp is there's very few building resources here. Most of the trees that you see here aren't actually harvestable, and harvesting wood in the swamp is pretty dangerous. So it's quite likely that you'll get stuck or poisoned or something while you're trying to get wood. So if you're planning on building here, it's best to bring the resources from the Black Forest or from the meadows. That's going to make your building experience more enjoyable. The mountains is a very dangerous place to build because of all the elevations and the two-star wolves and everything else the mountains packs at you. It can be quite dangerous here and visibility gets pretty low in the snowstorms. So in the mountains, one of the best things to build is actually stuff out of stone because there's lots and lots and lots of stone in the mountains. You could argue that the mountains is the most abundant source of stone in Valheim. There's very little wood in the mountains though, so again, just like the swamp, you want to bring your wood into the biome if you plan on building here. When you're in the mountain, consider looking for one of these pre-spawn spots, simply because they usually have leveled terrain, which is going to make it a lot easier for you to build, it's going to make it faster, which means you're less likely to die, and additionally, they have a base structure, which can help give you some inspiration or at least a framework. Uh, usually, it's kind of hard to get started, but once you have a safe place, then you can expand your safe place and make it better. But getting that safe place in the beginning 
uh, it can be a bit tricky, so using these initially spawned structures makes it easier. The mountains are full of these drake creatures and wolves, and the resources from these creatures in particular are really, really useful. Frost arrows are some of my personal favorite items in the game, and you can also make some great food out of them as well. So having access to them is important. Luckily, everything else in the mountains is hostile towards golems for some reason. Although, uh, the golem always wins. You also need to be wary of drakes, because just like wraiths, they can fly over your walls. So any structure you build in the mountains needs to be properly sealed off. The mountains is really a good place to build castles, especially if you find one of these areas and maybe have a golem flatten it out for you. And of course, the mountains are home to silver, which is one of the coolest metals in the game. Silver weapons do lots of damage against undead, and the Ashlands, guess what it's full of? Undead. So the silver sword is actually going to be equal to the Mistlands weapon, just because of this factor. And then we have the plains. Personally, the plains is my favorite place to build, because it's so open, you can see so well when it's not foggy, and the goblins just bring the metal to you! You know, goblins are gonna attack your base and that kind of thing, and you just kill them and they bring the metal! It's great! Fighting these goblin guys is one of my favorite things to do in Valheim. The plains also is an abundance of fine wood. The plains have an abundance of fine wood, some wood, and some stone. If you find these structures, they're a lot of stone, but plenty of planes don't have those structures at all. They just have these kind of rocks, so there's not that much stone available. It's kind of like the other biomes, in that when you build here, you really want to bring your material from the meadows and the black forest to make your building experience more enjoyable. But the plains is fraught with danger. Locks can make butter out of your walls, Mosquitoes can come right over your tallest walls into your base and one hit you when you thought you were safe. And particularly large goblins will show up sometimes and again make butter out of your walls. Some of these guys will even make butter out of stone. One of the best perks of building in the plains is that you can plant almost everything. You can plant everything except the mislin stuff. Flax grows in the plains. Barley grows in the plains, onions grow, carrots grow, turnips grow, oak trees grow, birch trees, fir trees, pine trees, and beech trees. So the plains is basically the king of farming and plants in Valheim. And if you have a plains with a little patch of mislins nearby, then boom, you can farm every item that's currently in the game. And finally, we have building a base in the Mistlands. This is certainly not for the faint of heart. The Mistlands has a lot of stone, and it's where you find the black marble resource, so you can make some really cool stuff out of the material here. However, there's almost no regular wood available here, so it's one of the biomes that you'll need to bring wood from other biomes into. And the monsters here are hardcore difficult. Like, they're all gonna make your base look like butter. And the ones that don't make your base look like butter will make you look like butter. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Consider checking out my tutorial all about purchasing your own dedicated Valheim server. It's a great way to play Valheim with your friends, and it also supports me, helps me keep making these Valheim videos. Comment below if you'd like a specific tutorial about something in Valheim. I love making these tutorials, it's really fun, and I have a blast. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!